This is the guy who's gonna save the comic book industry? Yeah, I don't think so. Now available on Lulu, John Haynes at Death's Door. The man who rules the world takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes comic book. Get your copy of the first John Haynes comic at Lulu.com today. Better get the cool slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> Recently, comic creator Mark Millar went on Twitter to post a tweet saying that Eric D. July sent him the first two issues of Isom and said that he loved both issues. And he went on to say that it was hard to believe that this was his first venture into comics and it was really well put together. And he said he also loved to see a guy doing his own thing. Now, I have a question to ask Mark Millar regarding Isom number one and two and his opinion that praises it. Did we read the exact same comic? Because when I read Isom number one and two as a writer with over 25 years of experience and a publisher with over a decade in the business running SJS Direct, I have to say that Isom number one and two were books that I would consider to be some of the worst comics I have ever read, and I've read a lot of bad books during the black and white craze of the mid to late 1980s, and I also have to say that this book was not very well put together in terms of structuring its story, and the overall writing gets progressively worse with the second issue of Isom. So I have to wonder, did Mark Millar and I read two completely different books, or is Mark Millar being disingenuous as related to the glowing review that he posted on Twitter for all of those members of Comicsgate to see on that social media site? Because as someone who has been a comic fan since he was four years old in 1978, I have been out here buying comics for the last 30 years, and ever since I heard about many of the indie crowdfunded comics, I have been spending money to support many independent comic creators. And when I go out here and I post a review video of a comic, I try my best to remain objective about the reviews that I make, not just presenting my opinions regarding the story, but also trying to go out here and present advice and criticism to creators so that they can get a understanding of what they need to do to improve their craft on the next issue. And many indie creators, when they read my reviews, a lot of them are grateful for the advice that I give them in my critiques of their comic. And a lot of people like seeing my comic review videos because I oftentimes go out here and point out where they are making their mistakes so that they can improve on their craft. And I do this because I want to be honest with those comic creators that are coming up and I want to see those creators improve in their craft as creators. So I try to go out here and present opinions that will help them improve with their storytelling and also give readers insight on the kind of books that are of high quality that they should spend their money on because these independent comics cost anywhere from $15 if you're buying a paper copy minimum to what Eric July charges which I believe is outrageous in $50 with a for a book plus shipping and these books are not cheap and that's why I oftentimes when I'm doing reviews will go in depth on those books because I know that to make an indie comic, yes, you have to have a lot of passion, but there has to be people out here who show just as much care when they go out here and review these comics. So when I listen to Mark Millar going out here and making praise of Isom number one, I have to wonder not only did we read the same comic, or are we both coming from a place of gen the same genuineness because Mark Millar's praise of Isom number one really comes across as extremely disingenuous. And it comes across as disingenuous because I read Isom number one and Isom number two 
And when I read both of those books, both of those books had numerous technical issues that prevent them from being some book that I would consider for my best of 2023 list, like I did with the most recent book, Jungle Drama, and books like Sister Mercy, books like Bobby Joe, books like Christine. These indie creators put the work in their books, and I could see the work in their books that I did not see in Eric July's Isom number one and two. No, what I saw in Isom number one and two was a book that really didn't know what it wanted to be. I mean, I'm still wondering if the story of Avery Silman is a detective story, is it a supernatural story, or is it a superhero story? I mean, all three of these genres all have their own models for storytelling, and, and Eric July cannot decide what his book's focus is going to be, and that's what prevents his Isom book from having a mission overall, the way Amazing Fantasy 15 gave Spider-Man a mission. Now, if you look at Amazing Fantasy 15, you'll clearly see that Stan Lee and Steve Ditko established Peter Parker as the main character, and what Peter Parker wants is power because he's the bullied nerd, and as the bullied nerd, he wants this power, and he gets that power when he's bitten by the radioactive spider. And once he gets the power, he looks to elevate his low social status. And he does that as he's making plans to go out here and become a TV star. And the, his first appearance is on the, on the wrestling show where he takes on Crusher Hogan. And as he takes on Crusher Hogan, before he goes out there, Uncle Ben tells him, with great power comes great responsibility. And Peter blows it off because he's a teenager and he wants to elevate his social status. And he goes to wrestle Crusher Hogan, gets the money. But as the gate is stolen by a, a robber, he lets it go because he feels like he does not owe society anything because people have done him bad. But as he's getting home with his winnings and is making plans for his future, his whole world is turned around when Uncle Ben is murdered. And when he finds this out, he hopes to use his power to go out here and make that person pay for taking his uncle's life. And as he confronts that, that person who took his uncle's life, he finds it's the same burglar who murdered his Uncle Ben. And in that whole story, we get the hero, we get him wanting power, and we get a lesson about responsibility, and we get Peter Parker's mission at the end of the book, which is he wants to make sure that no other family suffers the way his family did when his Uncle Ben died, because when he got power, he didn't use it responsibly, and now he understands he has a responsibility to others to use his power to protect them from predators like the burglar. That's what we got in 22 pages of Amazing Fantasy 15 regarding the Spider-Man character and his mission, but with Isom in over 90 plus pages, we don't get that in the first issue. Yes, we get introduced to Avery Silman in a passive fashion, but we don't get an active presentation of him that shows us who he is, what his mission was as a hero, or a reason to care about his mission. No, we get some story about him being asked to go out here and investigate the disappearance of a woman, and, he's done, and he does this because a, he's afraid of being shamed by a mama, and it's passive because it's showing him as a weak character who's in the background of his own book, not somebody who's in the foreground active in his own story, working on developing his own mission. And that's the big problem with Isom is that it's passive and, it's, and Avery is basically in the background while all the other white and non-black characters are at the forefront. And they're in the forefront as the ones of having all the power while Avery is in the background doing whatever. I mean, he's supposed to be investigating a case, but I don't even see him using any sort of good detective work. And that was in the first issue of Isom. The second issue of Isom is a complete jumbled mess of plot threads. I mean, we get on the cover, why did Isom quit? And the way Isom quit was, again, really passive in that, oh, he couldn't save a white woman at a comic convention. 
that that's not enough story and the problem with Isom is that we don't get a clear definition of him as a hero we don't get a clear definition of his mission as a hero and we don't get to see him building relationships with a rogues gallery no we get to see a very passive and underdeveloped character a passive and underdeveloped character who is very similar to what I see in many of what they call the social justice style comics produced by Marvel and DC Comics. I mean, when I look at Isom, it is no different than what is presented in the pages of a what they call an SJW comic at Marvel and DC right now in terms of the just poor writing and poor character development. But you have guys like Mark Millar praising Isom while all the time denouncing all of these other terrible books over at Marvel in DC. And when I listen to that praise, again, it's coming across as extremely disingenuous. And when I listen to Mark Millar's praise of Isom, it's following a disturbing trend I'm seeing with the Comicsgate movement. I mean, with the Comicsgate movement over the last couple of months, ever since Eric July got successful, I'm seeing a lot of people going out here and praising books that are of poor quality and doing the exact same thing that they accuse the social justice warriors on the left on Twitter of doing. They on the right are out here giving undue praise to Eric July, and it's only because of the so-called success that he had as relating to raising the millions of dollars for his Isom book, and the only reason I believe they're supporting this book is because of the political position that Eric July has and was shown as he was out here in a picture with Kyle Rittenhouse and was on Fox News. So they're only supporting him really based on his political position and their opinions are not really based on any sort of objective facts as related to craft and that's a problem for me because it's showing that the whole comics gate movement and those in the industry have some compromised ethics and they have some compromised ethics because they're out here looking to create a covert contract where they give Eric July a pass for a poor quality book and hoping that they can go out here and ride on his coattails into getting themselves some success as related to piggybacking on his success and sadly Eric July can't see how he's basically being taken advantage of by many of the white folks in the whole comics gate movement he can't see how he's being played but when I look at this whole praise that Mark Millar is given I just have to look at that praise as with a side eye because it's coming across as real suspect and it's coming across as real suspect to me because any creator worth their salt would have been out here looking to try to help Eric July improve on his craft, not tell him that his book is great when everybody's first book oftentimes has issues. I mean, when I wrote my first couple of comic scripts a couple of years ago, they weren't that great. And they, I knew that they weren't great, so I went out here and I put them to the side. Then as I started to refine my craft, I did the All That Glitter script, which I thought was pretty good. I did the No Good Deed script, which I thought was pretty solid. Then the one I invested money in was the No Good Deed script, because after I edited it down, I had 11 pages to cut it to nine. Then I did the A Death's Door script, which I knew was very solid. And that was the one I invested the money in. But I understood that the whole thing is that when you're out here starting out and people are giving you a lot of undue praise, it's because the book isn't of quality and they, they really have ulterior motives. And what they have is an ulterior motive of trying to get on piggyback on Eric July's success. But I just, again, have to wonder what is Mark Millar's ethics like to give this Isom book all of this praise when the book clearly has a lot of technical issues and as somebody who has been in the entertainment industry like I have he would know that this book has technical issues and would basically wouldn't want to go out here and give this book this kind of praise because that's not what any creator would do ethically no they wouldn't want to go out here and say that something is great when it's not great at all but what I'm finding with Comicsgate and many of those on of the outliers they are not really being as ethical as I would think they would want to be. 
and they're not being very honest as, as related to the kinds of reviews that they're giving regarding ISOM, and that really is an issue for me, because if we want to so-called save the comic book industry like many people on Comicsgate and Comics YouTube say they want to, then we have to be honest about the quality of the books that are currently being produced as related to these crowdfunding projects, and we have to be honest with those creators if we hope to help them improve. And when Mark Millar, a guy who created the comic book Wanted, which was turned into a movie, says this book is great, yes, that's his opinion, but the whole thing is I have to think that his opinion is suspect in his praise of Eric July, because if we both read the same book and we both have the same kind of experience as related to comics, screenwriting, and novels, you can't say that this book is good, and that's where I have an issue with Comicsgate and guys like Mark Millar, because if you're not honest with people, you can't go out here and help anybody grow in this business, and that's a big problem I'm seeing with a lot of people. They're afraid to be honest with people and let them know where the problems are as related to their comics. Now, this isn't the first time I have had issue with creators. I mean, I had an issue with the guys at Concrete Comics regarding that Primate comic, which had a black guy in an ape mask, and I called it out. Now, I know that it may have upset those guys at Concrete Comics to hear that and about their blonde-haired character Luna with the white guy, but the whole thing is... It's better to hear it from a cre another creator than to hear it from the audience and let them tell you what's wrong. Because maybe a seasoned creator, when you're doing the script, can let you know, hey, don't do that in your book because it's going to do damage to your sales. It's going to do damage to your brand and help you understand that if you're appeal creating products for customers, you need to focus on core elements like your story and your character development. And that's something I'm not seeing being focused on with Isom, because with Isom number two, again, it was all about introducing all of these characters of the Ripaverse without laying a foundation for the lead character who was supposed to be Avery Selman. I mean, if Avery's book is the first book, then it's the foundation for the Ripaverse, same way like I did with John Haynes. The Temptation of John Haynes is the foundation for the SJS Direct Universe, and in that book, I put hints at the introduction of Isis. In that book, I laid down the foundation for Esteem becoming a heroine. In that book, I put all sorts of elements to lay the foundation for the universe because everything that you build in a universe is built on small elements. And then in the next book, what you do is build on those elements. And what Eric July tries to do is cramp all of these elements together but the thing is, they don't flow together organically. I mean, in Isom number two and in Isom number one, Yaira and Alpha Core really don't flow organically in the Isom story. And it would have just been better to just introduce Yaira in, a, in her own book, introduce Alpha Core in their own book, because what they do is take away from Isom's story. But you have guys like Mark Millar saying, oh, this book is great, but I don't think he's ready for prime time as related to editing because he's the one who was out here. He wanted to say, we need veteran creators to come in and we need 20 good books to save comic shops. Well, I have to ask a critical question to Mark Millar. Is Isom the kind of book you would be considered to be one of the 20 that could save comic shops? And I ask that question because when I look at Isom, I don't see a book that's going to save comic shops. No, I see the same kind of book that used to be published by indie creators back in the 90s that would get a whole lot of sales from speculators, but those books would have some of the worst storytelling, and eventually, within a year of their erratic schedules, would eventually wind up disappearing from comic shops because the books wouldn't be able to maintain their schedule as one, and two, they would have such terrible stories and terrible art that they were virtually unreadable after maybe the second or third issue. I mean, a lot of those extreme 90s books, they, with, with all the sexy heroines and no story, I remember those books from them, and Isom is the same kind of book, but with a right-wing political narrative that is pushing much of the sales in the short term, 
but will not build a fan base in the long term. So if this is the kind of book that Mark Millar proposes will be one of the 20 books that could save comic shops, then I say those comic shops are in a lot of trouble because if this is the kind of book that he proposes that is going to be the standard for veteran creators, then it's not going to be a quality standard overall for those shops. And it's not the kind of book that would meet the standard for SJS Direct. No, when at SJS Direct, I demand a higher standard for my storytelling. I demand a higher standard for my art in that I understand that the artist needs a quality script to work with. And an artist needs a quality script where the main character is introduced on the first or the third page, and the main character and the, what the character wants to do is presented almost immediately, and we're given reasons to care in the panels, and we're also given sequences and transitions that flow from scene to scene and make every act set up a payoff that pays off in that issue, and that issue basically has to start giving you some sort of twist towards the last page, and not just end in an uneven and awkward fashion, the way Isom ended in the first and second issue. So, when I listen to Mark Millar praising Isom, and then also talking about what we need in the comic book industry, he clearly doesn't come across as somebody who understands the publishing business, Yes, he's a great creator. He had a successful comic in Wanted, but he doesn't understand what the reader wants is a quality comic, and he doesn't understand what the elements of a quality comic are, because a quality comic is not just the concept. It is It starts with the script, because the script is the execution of the concept, and the problem with Isom is that Isom doesn't, is, is got an idea based on, on Eric July's politics and ideals of politics, no different than the social justice warriors who write their comics based on feelings, but there's no structure of ideas in a way that creates a form of story that makes you care about that character. No, Isom is all about the ideal and the covert contract that those in Comicsgate have over trying to save their industry with a new universe but that universe is based on a rocky and unstable foundation of a writer who does not have the experience in craft to understand to put together a quality story. So with this Isom comic, it's a complete mess. But what's even more of an issue for me is the ethics that many of the comics YouTubers are having regarding this Isom comic in that they're not looking to be objective in their critiques not looking to go out here and present a unbiased review of the book or looking to help Eric July improve in his craft. No, they want to go and grab on his coattails, hoping to gain some crowdfunding success for themselves, all while the elements of craft in the industry are dying, like many of our legendary creators, like George Perez, Neil Adams, and many others. All of the techniques that these men taught and we're, and we're presenting in their comics is going by the wayside, all so that guys can go out here and make a fast dollar. And that's the thing that troubles me because I want to see creators improve in their craft. And the only way they can improve in that craft is if you have the backbone and the stones and the integrity to tell creators when they're going wrong. And if you're a good creator worth your salt and you know something is wrong with a book, you have to let that person know what's going wrong so that they can get it right. I mean, you don't want to be like I was when I first started SJS Direct in 2009. People were getting upset about my book covers because I didn't have the money back then to do book covers like I wanted to. And I was doing hand-drawn covers after I did The Temptation of John Hayes cover. And it came out all wrong because I just gave the artist the poor instructions. So I started drawing my own covers and people were attacking me for it. But you don't want to wind up there, but the whole thing is a lot of people in the comics industry, they don't want to go out here and say what needs to be said. No, they would rather go out here and try to disingenuously sell you a bad comic, tell you it's good, and that is no different than what we're getting with what they called SJW Marvel, but that's not the standard here at SJS Direct. 
no, my standard is higher than Comicsgate. My standard is higher than Marvel and DC. No, I demand better for the audience, and I want to give my customers the very best. And that's where I differ from Eric July, who writes his rip reverse code of ethics, but I don't see where that ethic code of ethics is being followed, because when you have creators praising a book that they know is bad, then that's a complete betrayal of ethics of, set, of trying to serve the customer, because when you want to serve the customer, you listen to the customer. That's something I do every day here on SJS Direct. I leave things open on my social media to be heard from people. I mean, I have great relationships with many of my readers and many of my viewers. Viewers, I try to go out here and talk to my customers, and if they ask me for something, I go out here and do it. I mean, I've had readers ask me to write books like Legendary Mad Matilda and The Woman Crisis, and I go out here and I put those, publish those books because readers ask for those books, and I make every effort to reach out to the reader, but when I look at what's happening with Mark Millar and his so-called praise of Eric July, it's showing me again a troubling trend as related to Comicsgate and as related to comics, and this troubling trend for me is one where I'm seeing the complete ethics of Comicscape becoming just as bad as the SJWs they complain about, and them basically going into the same echo chamber that they say the SJWs are in, not learning to listen to anybody who wants to present a constructive critique of their work, and this is really bad for comics because Comicsgate was supposed to be the place where people were supposed to want to get change, but it's seeming like there is no hope for no change in comics, and neither side wants to change anything. No, it seems like people in comics just want to be told what they want to hear, and don't want to learn what they need to know. Now, my first full comic, John Haynes at Death's Door, is available on in paperback at lulu.com. And if you want to get your copy of John Haynes at Death's Door, you can pick up your copy of John Haynes at Death's Door by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to pick up my first full digital comic, Esteem, No Good Deed, you can find that comic on Kindle for 99 cents and try out a comic that, that ha is in my creative style. And you can also pick up many of the books of the SJS Direct Universe, like The Temptation of John Haynes, the Isis series, the Esteem series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my vampire novel Eternal Night, my black sorority novel The Thetas, or my black business novel Recipe for Success. You can find all of those books in the SJS Direct Universe in paperback and Kindle format on Amazon.com and other online booksellers like Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and you can also find them in digital format at places like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, and Barnes and & Noble. And if you want to see me be able to make my next comic and support me in making my next comic, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, read, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed, all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online booksellers everywhere today. No! Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.